Hi, and welcome to chapter 10, Chemical Quantities. Today, we get to talk about the mole. And the mole is a form of measurement. But it has to do with chemistry. For instance, here's a sandcastle. It's a pretty big sandcastle. And you could measure this by counting every single grain of sand, but I don't know if you'd ever finish that. It would take a very long time. What if it was an easier way to do that? Wouldn't you use it? So we want to look at ways that we can convert between counting something and its mass or even its volume. So we know that chemistry is a quantitative science. That means Quantitative means it has to do with numbers. Qualitative means it has to do with characteristics, like if it's red or blue or green, that would be qualitative. Quantitative, however, means 5 grams, 10 grams. It's an amount of something. So in chemistry, we analyze what makes something up. So we want to know percentages, we want to know grams, things like that. Of these things. So it's kind of like if you think of having a pie and it has a whole pie has eight pieces in it. So one eighth of the pie is one piece of pie. Okay, so we can find those things out about chemicals too. So we can think of something we go to the store and we buy some fruit, and if we want to know how much it's going to cost we see that it's $1.39 a pound, so we put it on a balance or a scale, and we multiply that by $1.39, the number of pounds by $1.39. Now, if you went out to where the apples are grown, they might give you a big basket that's called a bushel, and if you fill that up, you would have a bushel of apples. That's volume, because it might vary in the number and the amount of grams of apples to fill that bushel. There are all different ways of measuring things. We could also have a dozen uh, apples, okay? You know that a dozen means 12. So a dozen is an easy way to say I have 12 without saying I have 12. So if you have 12 dozen, you have 144. So it's a little bit easier to work with 12 than it is to work with 144, okay? We could also say that if we measured a dozen apples, it might come out to be two kilograms. Okay, so that would mean 12 apples would weigh 2 kilograms on average. Or we could say it's 0 0.20 bushel of apples, so the volume is less than a bushel. So if you know the count and the relative amount in each of the other form of measurement, you can actually convert between these units. For instance, we know that one dozen apples is 12 apples. You know that two kilograms of apples, okay, for instance, are equal to one dozen apples, and one dozen of apples equals 2.20 bushels. So since these all have apples in them, or a dozen of apples, if we multiplied these, okay, we could possibly convert from things, all right? So that's where we're going with this. Oops. All right. So we want to find the mass from a count. So we've been talking about apples. And we're going to call average size apples like they're pretty much all the same. If one dozen has um, a mass of 2 kilograms. So we want to find the mass of 90. Okay. So let's work through this problem together. We're going to use dimensional analysis again. Okay, and we're going to convert the number of apples to mass of apples. So we have 90 apples. We know that 12 apples equals one dozen. And we know that one dozen is equal to two kilograms. So what is it that we want to know? We want to know the last thing. We want to know the mass of 90 apples is how many kilograms. All right, so we have to look at the identification. We know the number. We have to convert them to dozens, and from dozens, we have to convert to mass. So we have certain conversion factors that we've already determined what they are. We know that one dozen apples is 12 apples. We also know that two kilograms of apples 
is the same as one dozen apples. So all we have to do is write our 90, our 90 apples. We have a conversion factor. Notice the apples are on the bottom because we want the apples to cross out. Dozen, dozens on the bottom to cross out, and kilograms. And we're going to end up with an answer of kilograms of apples. So you can either say multiply across, multiply the bottom, and then divide, or multiply by 1, divide by 12, multiply by 2, divide by 1. You'll still get 15. And notice how they cancel. That You've already done that. This is just review. So a dozen apples has a mass of 2 kilograms, and 90 apples is less than 10 dozen apples. Okay, So 10 dozen would be about 20 kilograms. So did your answer come out to be less than 20? Yes, it did. If you know the mass of a bushel of apples and the mass of a single apple, what other information can you calculate? I'm not going to put this on um, play pause. I just want you to think about it for a second before I reveal the answer. Okay, you can calculate the number of apples in a bushel by setting up the information you have as units with a common unit, kilograms per apple. So let me show you that in the space in between. So if we look at this, you have a mass. Okay, so I'm going to say the mass is 100 grams, just, just 100 kilograms, okay? All right. Okay, and if you know that one bushel has, say, 10 dozen, apples, and there's, and one dozen is 12 apples. So we could actually find out how many kilograms one apple has. And of course I erased that. Okay. So you can actually find out how many kilograms each apple will be. So with that introduction, let's talk about the mole. Now, some people think the mole is just this blind, they call it the mole rat. It kind of looks like a rat. And he's actually kind of blind, all right? But we're not talking about the animal at the mole. We're talking about a unit of measurement. Okay, we can use the mole to help us count atoms, molecules, or formula units of a substance. Okay, atoms are really, really small. Okay, and we need a lot of them before we actually see the substance. It would be very difficult to count these particles because even with a microscope, you're not going to be able to see them. So, we know we can buy a dozen of eggs at the store. You can see those eggs, okay? You know there's 12 of them. So, there's 12 individual eggs in the dozen, or 12 donuts, or 12 slices of pizza. That would all be a dozen. You already used this term dozen. A mole is something very similar to that, but it's a much represents a much bigger number of items. Okay, How big is that number? It is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Wow, that's huge. So that's how many things are in a mole. Now this number gets a special name. Avogadro came up with this number, okay? And he did some work with gases, and he found out there was this many particles in a, what he called a mole of gas, okay? So this was where we got this number from Avogadro. So it's called Avogadro's number. 
Okay, representative particles is a term we use to talk about whatever it is we're counting, okay? So, for instance, the representative particle of an element is an atom, the representative particle of sugar is a molecule, the representative unit of sodium chloride is a formula unit, okay? So, there are some examples of helium and iron which have atoms in them. Now, I've talked about this before. I've talked about the diatomic molecules, the ones that never like to be alone. I've given you the idea to review of Brinkelhoff. B R I N C L H O and F. That's these elements right here. Or I call it the 7-1 rule. You go to element 7, which is nitrogen. You go over to group 17, fluorine. You go down group 17 until you get to Roman numeral I for iodine. And that says, oh, we don't use Roman numerals. We use Arabic numerals. So you go up to the other side and find element 1 which is hydrogen. There's seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Whichever one of these two things help you remember this, the better they are. So the representative particle for the diatomic molecules are molecules. I mean, diatomic molecules are molecules. Okay, so that's true for any molecular compound. For ionic compounds like calcium chloride, it's formula unit. Okay, what is the mole give us, okay? It allows us to count the number of representative particles in a substance. So a mole, we can work with moles instead of working with individual particles, such as 6.0, because there's 6.02 times 10 to 20, three of them in a mole, and this is a more reasonable number to talk about so that we can see the substance. All right, so let's look at this table of the relationship that I just mentioned. I have, you might want to take a screenshot of this. Um, you can see what the representative particles are, atoms, molecules, ions, or formula units. And you can see that one mole of that substance would be 6.02 times, times 10 to the 23 of this item. So, how can we measure sand in a sand sculpture? All right, we mentioned that earlier, we, we could count, we could look at volume, we could measure its mass, we could take a representative piece of it and try to extrapolate how much is there, okay? So, count, mass, and volume. All right, so you could take the number of buckets of sand. So a bucket of sand would be a little bit more reasonable than a grain of sand. Okay, we could look at the mass by multiplying the number of buckets by the mass of one bucket, or the volume by multiplying the number of buckets by the volume of each bucket. All right. So how do we convert between moles and number of particles? So here we have our conversion units, okay? We can either have the mole on top or the 6.02 times 10 to 23 because these th two things are the same. One mole is the same as 6.02 times 10 to the 23. So they're equivalent, okay? So they both mean the same thing. So we know that one over one equals 1. So that's basically what, we're, what allows us to do that. Now I use the word equivalent instead of equal because the number part is different. Okay, If you look at what they represent, it's the same exact thing, but the numbers are different, so that's why we have conversions. Okay, so here's a problem. We have magnesium, and we want to find out how many moles of magnesiums 
Magnesium is in 1.25 times 10 to the 23 atoms of magnesium. So we write down what we know. We know how many atoms we have, and we want to know how many moles we want. So we want to find the number of moles. So we're going to have to set up a dimensional analysis problem. Okay. So in order to do that, we have to remember what our equivalency is. One mole of magnesium equals 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms of magnesium. So that's going to be used as our conversion factor. All right. So in this page, we see that it's written in both ways. It's written with a mole on top or the mole on the bottom. Okay. Then we have to def decide which one we want to use. Since we know how many atoms we have, atoms is going to be our starting point. So that will be the numerator, atoms over one. So we want atoms on the bottom. So this is the one we're going to use, okay? So now we do our multiplication. And when we do our multiplication, we get 1.25 times 10 to the 23, all right? times 1, and we are going to divide that by 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms. The atoms cancel out, and our answer ends up being 0 0.208 moles of magnesium. Okay, I, before I go on to the next slide, I want to... I don't want to do that. There we go. Okay, I want to look at something. See, the atoms cancel out, and we're left with moles of magnesium. That's what we want, okay? That's our check to make sure we have the right label. All right, does it make sense? Okay, we have less than a mole to begin with because 1.25 is less than 6.02, so our answer should be less than a mole. So how much less than it is? It's about a fourth, and we got somewhere around there, okay? Okay, so number of particles and moles. Um, what if we wanted to go the other way around? So again, you have to know how many atoms are in a representative unit, unit okay? And we can get that um, from, and from the chemical formula, okay? So let's take a look at this. So if we have a dozen cups and each cup contains um, six marbles, okay, we have 72 marbles. So each cup has six, and we have 12 cups, so we just multiply six by 12. Okay, so let's look at this. Um, if we want to convert between number of particles and moles, we can look at carbon dioxide as an example. Okay, carbon dioxide has carbon and oxygen in it. And carbon and oxygen are in a ratio of 1 to 2. So, in this atom, how many, I mean, in this molecule, we have three atoms, okay? All right? And if we have a mole of carbon dioxide, we could simply say there's a 3 times 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms. We're not saying which atoms they are. Okay, um, so all we have to say is if we want to know the total number of atoms here, we'd multiply Avogadro's number by three. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Oh, there's our friend, the mole. That's what a real mole, the animal, looks like. Again, I said they burrow. They don't need to look at things, so they have a heightened sense of smell. And look at their hands. They can really burrow. All right, so let's look at the mole. So basically, a mole is 15 centimeters long and 5 centimeters tall and has a mass of 145 grams. We can find out its volume from that information and its mass. Um, how could we figure out the mass of a mole 
of animal moles. Okay, so we would multiply 145 grams times 6.02 times 10 to the 23, and we get a massive number. I really like to think of having a mole of pizza because pizza is my favorite food. But if I had a mole of pizza, I don't, I don't know who could make that many moles of pizza, and I doubt I could even eat a mole of pizza. Okay, let's look at this. So if we had a mole of these animal moles, it would be 60 times as big as the mass of all of Earth's ocean. If we spread it over the entire surface of the Earth, our Avogadro's number of animal moles would form a layer more than 8 million animal moles thick. Think about that, 8 million animal, animal moles thick. If we line them up end to end, they would stretch from Earth to Alpha Centauri, almost two million, more than two million times. So that's, what, at four light years away, I think, Alpha Centauri, and then two million times that. All right, so let's go from moles to number of atoms. Okay, here's a question. Propane is a gas used for cooking and heating. How many atoms are in 2.12 moles of propane? So we want atoms, okay? So the first thing we have to do is look at carbon and hydrogen. There's three and eight. So there's a total of 11 atoms in one molecule of propane. So what we need to do is convert 2.12 moles into atoms and then multiply that by 11. So let's see how we're gonna do that. All right. So we know, what do we know? We know we have 2.12 moles, okay, to start with. All right, so there we go, right there. We know that one mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23, and one molecule has 11 atoms. We wanna know the total number of atoms. So first, write the conversion factor, convert the moles to molecules. All right, so we're gonna start with moles. All right, so let's look at this where they got this, how they chose this one. So we're gonna have two point, I think he said 02 moles. So we want that in the numerator. So we want moles in the denominator for that, okay? So a new conversion factor is we also know that we have 11 atoms per molecule. All right, so if we write it out, we see that we're going to have two, I'm sorry, I said 2.02, it's 2.12. Okay, we have 2.12 moles. Moles on the bottom, so these cancel out. Molecules on the bottom, so molecules cancel out, so we'll end up with atoms. So we'll basically go this way, and that's our answer. Okay, does it make sense? We have 11 atoms, which means we, and we have approximately two moles, so that's 20, about 20 times more um, atoms than Avogadro's number. Okay, I'm gonna have you explain this and play posit. How is a mole similar to a dozen? Okay, I'll be back in a minute. Both mole and dozen are quantities made of specific number of representative particles. They both refer to multiple objects or particles that are now being thought of as a single object or particle with multiple parts. I will accept anything that sounds similar to that. What about molar mass? Okay, we know how to find atomic mass. Molar mass is the mass of a mole of something. So we know when we've been talking about atomic mass, we've been actually using something called AMUs, little teeny things. But I've kind of hinted at, would it be nice if we could use grams? And that's where molar mass comes into play. Because if you look at your periodic table, you will see a mass amount, okay? For instance, if you look at hydrogen, it says 1.00 and some other numbers. That means hydrogen, hydrogen's atomic mass is one. Okay, but if we had exactly, well, usually hydrogen is H2, so that would be two AMUs. 
If we had a mole of H2 molecules, we would have two grams exactly. So that's kind of a neat thing that happens with molar mass. Using the periodic table, those, molar ma those masses, atomic masses, if we have a mole of the substance, we can change that to grams. All right, so let's look at carbon. Carbon is what we base our periodic table on. We know that the mass of carbon is 12, 12 AMUs, a very, very small number, okay? And an AMU is 1 12th the size, or 1 12th the mass of carbon, all right? So if we have 6.02 time, time, 6 times 10 to 23 of carbon atoms, okay? we would multiply that by 12, okay? And we can actually then find out what the mass is of a single atom or if, of basically a mole of atoms. Okay, so the atomic mass of an element expressed in grams is the mass of a mole of the element. That is so neat. So for instance, carbon its atomic mass is 12, so its molar mass is 12.0. Hydrogen is 1 AMU, so its molar mass, that's atomic hydrogen, is 1 gram. And then as I said, hydrogen is usually a diatomic particle. So H2 would be 2.0, so a mole of H2 would be 2.00 grams. So that's kind of the bridge between elements and molecules. All right, so one mole of carbon. There's 12 grams of carbon. That would be one mole. You have 6.02 times 10 to the 23 um, grams of carbon. Uh, sulfur would be 32.1 grams and iron um, that would be not that would be not right actually for iron iron would be 56 so this is not the right value I love it when Pearson puts the wrong thing in yeah I believe off the top of my head that it would be 56 grams how many atoms are contained in the molar mass of an element always 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 6.02 times 10 to 23 atoms. So this is going to give us rise to an other conversion factor. Okay, we can get a little more complicated and say the mole can be further defined as the amount of substance that contains the same number of representative particles as the number of atoms in 12 grams of carbon 12. Okay, so 24.3 grams is the molar mass of magnesium. So, I mean, it's kind of a logical thing. If we look at the atomic mass in the periodic table, let's make it simple. The molar mass is the mass of one mole of those elements, and we change the atomic mass from AMUs to grams to represent a mole. So now let's look at compound. Here's sulfur and oxygen, sulfur trioxide. So we have one sulfur and three oxygen atoms. We can find the mass by looking it up on the periodic table. Sulfur is 32. Going through this a little rapidly, but this is review. Okay, sulfur is 32. Oxygen is 16. So we get 48. Okay, add those together and we get 80.1. So one molecule of sulfur trioxide is 80.1 AMUs. Now, if we had one mole of SO3, all we have to say instead of AMUs, now it's important, this is the important part. Okay, that's AMUs. Okay, let's go to the next one. All right, we have one mole. Since we have one mole, we use grams, we use the same number. And one mole is 6.02, so it has 
that many molecules and that mass. All right. So for a compound, we have to find this is we can't just look at the periodic table itself and look at that number. But we have to find out from the periodic table the number of grams of each element, okay, and then add the masses together, okay. So we look for molar mass, and it can be molecular or ionic to do this. Okay, we usually use the term molar mass. Technically, for ionic compounds, sometimes we call this formula mass, okay? All right, so we can look at things like C6H4Cl2, which is paradichlorobenzene. Uh, we can look at water. We can look at sugar. And we can find the masses by adding up the atoms in grams from the periodic table. So how would we find sugar, for instance? All right, let me, let me do this one on this page. Okay, let's do sugar, which is how they did this. All right, they have six carbons. Let's start over here. I'll do it down here. Six carbons, all right, which is six times 12. I have 12 hydrogens, 12 times one, and I have six oxygens. I'm gonna do it like that so you don't think it's zero. Six times 16. So 6 times 12 equals 72, plus 12, plus 96, and 4 and 6 is 10, carry a 1, 10, 17, 18. So it's 180. If it was a molecule by itself, it would be AMUs, but if it's a mole, we use grams. That's it. That's how we do it. All right, let's practice finding the mass, molar mass of a compound. So what is the molar mass of hydrogen peroxide? So first thing we have to do is look at the mass of each of the representative elements. Hydrogen has a mass of one gram and oxygen has a mass of 16 grams. All right. And the molar mass is what we're looking for. So first thing we do is we have two moles of hydrogen. So we have two grams of hydrogen total, and we have two moles of oxygen, which means, again, let's do the math correctly. Someone didn't write this down correctly, so I will fix it. So this should be not two, it should be 32. So our total would be 32 plus 2, or 34 grams H2O2 for one mole H2O2. OK? So they fixed it here, OK? Did I add that right? I might have not. Add 32 and 2 is 34. Okay. The answer is the sum of the two times the molar mass of hydrogen and oxygen. 17 grams, and it makes sense. Molar mass is to, mol is to moles of a substance as atomic molecular mass is to one atom or one molecule of the substance. Okay, here's some of the key concepts. Some definitions. And the big idea, the mole is an important measurement in chemistry. That's it. See you later.